नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सबुदस् नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सबुदस् नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सबुदस् Home is to the worthy one, blessed one, and fully enlightened Buddha. Dear friends in the Dhamma, today I would like to discuss very important aspect of our life. Everyone in their life, they need a right view, right understanding, right perspective for them to. walk on the journey of life apart from this journey of life the buddhists have journey of samsara so to go out of this samsara to find peace and freedom to find emancipation and liberation we need to find the right view right understanding for our spiritual progress for our Uh, material progress for our peace for our freedom today we are discussing the samaditti sutta samaditti sutta means uh, having right understanding let us have a brief understanding about the uh, word samaditti ditti in pali language mean view or seeing but when you have prefixes samaditti and michaditti you can have two words from this ditti in buddhism one is samaditti right understanding the the correct the meaningful understanding and secondly you can have wrong or incorrect or wrong understanding that is called michaditti and right understanding called samaditti and So, when there were Sariputta and other monks was living in Savatthi at that time, and when there were monks and nuns at that time having a great discussion to find out what is samaditti, what is samaditti. This was the question uh, the monks and nuns discussing in the Dhamma hall in their walkways when they were having some uh, little chit chats. They were discussing. this topic so in this dhamma assembly the some monks asked from uh, the commander in chief in dhamma the sariputta the, the right hand disciple of the buddha it was asked from him what is the meaning of what what is the meaning of samaditi or right view how can we understand right understanding how can come how can we come into understanding of the right understanding so then this uh, uh, question was asked venerable sariputta told this venerable monks okay i am going to explain you in detail please pay your attention and i will explain in more detail and you can uh, question me you can uh, ask any clarification from me if you need to so Uh, at that time there is uh, right view let's say in our uh, science and all other uh, aspects in science also you ha- you have one thing one theory called hypothesis or presumptions these are used in order to come to a conclusion they will take a presumption and have a hypothesis and based on that hi- presumption based on that hypothesis they carry out scientific research and after that they will prove that okay our hypothesis is wrong our hypothesis was right or our hypothesis is uh, no meaning similarly for uh, ordinary people like us we need to have this samaditi right view to walk on the path of dhamma because without this right view we cannot uh, uh, go further in our spiritual journey because this is the sine qua non the most important the most valuable most uh, 
uh, useful tool in our spiritual path. Without this most useful tool in our spiritual path, we cannot walk on the path of Dhamma. So, when you have right understanding, you can have perfect confidence in Dhamma because uh, you know that you can uh, feel, you can understand, you can realize that uh, right understanding is very important and this right understanding give the perspective for you to understand the Dhamma and uh, having understood the Dhamma, then you will put in place all your confidence regarding Dhamma in Dhamma because you know, okay, this Dhamma is useful, this Dhamma is truth, this Dhamma is fruitful and this Dhamma give peace, this Dhamma give me freedom, this Dhamma give me uh, pacify my mind. So, to in order to arrive this true Dhamma, uh, Buddha said we need to understand, understanding the unwholesome root, the root of unwholesome and also understanding the unwholesome, two things, understanding the unwholesome and secondly understanding the root of the unwholesome. And thirdly, you have to understand the wholesome and fourthly, you have to understand the uh, root of wholesome. So, let us see what are the, uh, because in this sutta, the Venerable Sariputta has explained in uh, more detail, in 16 ways, he has clarified, he has uh, exemplified, he has uh, elaborated and explained in more detail in 16 ways. So, today we are going to discuss uh, the first method, how to understand right understanding, how to have a perspective, how to have, how to have a great view or great uh, uh, basic understanding of right view based on wholesome and unwholesome and the root of unwholesome and root of wholesome. So, these four factors will help us to have a right understanding. Let us say, uh, when we go to the sea, let us say you go to Japan and you uh, take a little bit of water from sea and you, you touch it and taste it and you feel the salty uh, taste in the water in the Japan. And even you go to America, even you to go Caribbean islands, even you go to Sri Lanka, wherever you touch the water and taste it, you will feel the uh, salty and uh, taste of the uh, sea water. Similarly, if you taste the dharma, wherever, whatever, whenever, you will taste the taste of freedom, you will taste the taste of freedom and taste of pacification, taste of peace. Because dharma is such nature, dharma is such uh, beautiful. And also this samaditi also explain as uh, Nairanika, this samaditi brings you to the Nibbana, this samaditi bring, brings you to the pacification and also this samaditi is praised by the Arahant, fully enlightened all Buddhas, previous Buddhas, uh, Gautama Buddha and previous Buddhas, all of them have uh, 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 explained and praised this uh, worthiness of the uh, right understanding. And also this is uh, truth universal, this is a truth eternal because it, it will not change during this Buddha's time and next Buddha's time. Uh, this right understanding will be the same, the eight noble path will be the same, there will not be a change because this, these are universal truth. Truths whether from time to time it may be hidden by the uh, sands of the time, but come on to surface again and again, the truth will be the same. So, uh, in uh, Buddhism, the regarding this uh, uh, four types of actions, we, we were just talking about wholesome and unwholesome, skillful and unskillful actions. So, killing is unskillful, unwholesome. Why? Because no one like uh, get killed themselves and no one like if somebody and comes and try to kill them. So, this is universal in some uh, 
world famous religions might teach you and you can see in that uh, sacred this text they may say that these animals are created for human consumption by the God. Uh, there is no sin, there is no unwholesome thing happened to you because you are killing these animals. It is not so, teach according to the teachings of the Buddha. All living beings love their life, all living beings love their love to live long, they never want to depart from this world. And whether you kill them after praying or before praying or after many rituals, still the unwholesome deed is done. The killing is unwholesome. You cannot purify by just by praying. You will get the bad karma, bad results or bad effects, bad fruits of your bad karma. No matter how many times you pray, no matter how many times you ask for forgiveness, it cannot be forgiven. But you can rectify. You can uh, prevent it happening again and again. That's the way and you can uh, give life to other animals. You can give food to other animals and make them live long. That way you can uh, uh, reduce, you can mitigate the effects of your bad karma. But uh, eventually you might get the results or uh, vipaka, the fruits of your bad karma. The secondly is stealing. Stealing is, uh, some people might say, it is okay to steal from our other race who are against us. It is okay to destroy, uh, st uh, steal their things, uh, but it is not good to steal our own things, our friends things, this kind of, no. The values are universal. Still, if stealing is bad, it is bad whether you steal from the government, steal from the people, steal from your neighbor, steal from your enemy, it is same. There is no difference. It is not regional, it is not uh, belong to one caste, creed, uh, this kind of uh, no discrimination. It is all equally they must uh, treat it. And thirdly, uh, third precept is called, uh, which is called uh, behaving, uh, uh, sexual misconduct. Actually, it is more than that, sensual misconduct. Uh, feeding your senses in a wrong way. Then the, they are, these three things happen uh, or manifested from your body. These three unwholesome deeds are committed using your body. Then secondly, another four unwholesome deeds are done by using your verbal actions. So, the first one is telling lies or false speech. Second one is malicious or hatred speech and the third one is harsh uh, speech and the last one is sampapalapa, the gossip. Nowadays, we can see so many relationships, so many good friends are uh, di di become normal friends or they have uh, lost their friendship due to the gossip or due to false or malicious uh, statement made behind when he is not in front and behind and telling gossips or telling uh, false statements about them and the good friends eventually uh, leave them behind or they become enemies each other forever. Why? Because of this divisive, malicious and harsh speech. So, the speech is like a X X which, which can cut from both sides, not a one way X, it is a two way X, maybe three way X, three sides it is cut. So, the, our words can be like that. So, we must be very careful, very used, we must be very mindful when we are speaking. That way we can avoid uh, any bad speeches that, can, that may come out from our mouth, because once words are uh, gone out of your mouth, you have no control, you have no, uh, you can't do any correction. Therefore, it is good if we can talk, talk after thinking, after pondering, after uh, contemplating, after reflecting whether I should say this, whether I should not say this. In that way, you can uh, reduce the risk of uh, creating enemies 
and also reduce the risk of creating very unpleasant situations. So, there are another three factors mentioned in this uh, 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 kusala, kusala, wholesome and unwholesome uh, uh, section that is happen inside our mind. One is covetousness or if we put in, in simple terms a greed or craving or desire. We are, we are always fascinated and we are always uh, mingled, our mind are always possessed and obsessed with all these of desires. Every time, every moment, everywhere, we are having so much desire. So, we have to be aware how our mind is behaving, we have to be aware how our thoughts are rising, how this greed and desire and craving are boiling inside us and bringing out and creating more and more craving inside our mind. And Thirdly, secondly, ill will. Ill will is the hatred. Nowadays, we can see many, many uh, uh, countries are involved in war and just killing each other and uh, having hatred towards one community to the other. So, this kind of uh, things can be happen in our mind. Then the last mental factor that can uh, lead us to wrong view is the wrong view itself. Wrong view itself can cause a lot of damages, a lot of harm for our spiritual progress. Be because if a person does not believe that there is no karma, there is no action and there is no fruits of that action or results of that action. That itself is a very dangerous, very harmful thinking. Based on that thinking, he can commit any kind of crime, any kind of uh, wrong thing, any kind of offense and he, he can create any harmful uh, things to himself and harmful things to others. So, therefore, right view is major and very important, very uh, valuable uh, understanding we need to get in order to have right, in order to have a good path in our spiritual journey. Let us say, let's, let me give you an example from a car. Let us say you drive, when you drive you use the mirrors, right? Mirrors are very important, plus you use the front uh, glass in front of the driving seat, you have a glass you can see in front and you have a rear uh, glass and uh, in order to see backside through rear mirror and also you have side mirrors. So, using these mirrors is very important for your task of driving, but if you stick to one mirror, if you stick to let us say you are looking at the rear mirror uh, while driving all the time and you cannot see the front, you cannot see the coming cars or bicycle, pedestrian, anything you cannot see clearly. And if you stick to left hand side uh, mirror or right hand side mirror, you still cannot see the other uh, things happening around. You might uh, collide with a tree, collide with a, uh, uh, any bridge or you might fall into canals or whatever. So, the many things can happen. So, just this uh, the, raw, uh, the rear mirror is just to make a reference and see any cars coming behind just to not to be stuck into that. So, similarly, when we are using our right view, correct view, we can uh, walk safely and go forward safely without any troubles and any problems. Similarly, in samsaric journey, journey of cycle and death and, death and birth, this kind of view is really important to have a right view. And also, if you have the front uh, glass. Uh, you can see the far, maybe you, you are driving in a two ki very straight road, you can see maybe 5 kilometers, 3 kilometers, 2 kilometers if you are driving in a high uh, road, you know, in the land, uh, you are just above the normal ground, you can see far, maybe 2, 3 kilometers. But if you drive just looking at very far, 
still you, you do not care about the what is coming near in your car just 2 three, 300 meters before you. You might collide with accident. So, similarly, so this using this right mirror in a right way is very important. Similarly, the, just a simi the, the worldly example in a spiritual journey it is also really, really very, very important to have right view. Right view is the sine qua non, the most important factor in the spiritual journey. If you have a wrong view, you might do all sort of war crimes, all sort of heinous, very bad, dangerous, wicked, cruel uh, actions and thoughts you might create in your mind. So, that is a very important thing. So, uh, Buddha said the root of unwholesome is the greed, hatred and delusion. These are the root. If you see whole world, the wars and all that, if you deep uh, dig into deep into these reasons and the causes for this war is the greedy person or very power hunger person who is behind the war. And he drive all these innocent people to get more lands, more resources, more things and cause mm, sufferings to millions and millions of people. And also hatred also can cause force and also delusion, not understanding that we all are equally suffering, equally facing lot of difficulties, equally undergoing lot of stresses and all that. So, if you have that wisdom, you do not want to cause, we are already suffering now, why, why do we want to cause more suffering to other beings, other human beings, other beings in, the, in this universe? They equally have a right and just uh, uh, right, they have a justful and fair uh, right to have a peaceful environment, to enjoy the resources, enjoy the other things equally. We human beings as well as non-human beings, animals, eh, all beings have right to live. So, and uh, so if you can abstain from killing, abstain from uh, 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 lying, abstain from stealing, abstain from sexual misconduct, abstain from gossip, abstain from uh, other uh, ill will, wrong view, malicious, harsh, gossip, false views. So, all these are wholesome deeds. The refraining factor is the create of wholesome thoughts in your mind. When you refrain from it and if you go further, let us say you do not tell lie, you can begin, you, you can start speaking truth. Let us say you do not say harsh words, then you can start speaking very kind, nice, gentle words. If, if you are stop using uh, Paul's uh, like uh, let us say useless words, you can start uh, making, encouraging other people. So, non-greed, non-hatred, non-delusion are very important in the right understanding. When we understand the root of unwholesome and un unwholesome also and also entirely he can abandon them. So, un in order to understand the root of unwholesome you need to have right understanding. In order to understand unwholesome you need to right understanding. In order to have understand the root of wholesome and also wholes uh, wholesome itself, root and the wholesome itself then you have a right, you need to have right understanding. And also in our mind we have underlying tendencies, we call anusaya, anusaya call underlying tendencies. So, even a little baby who was just born, he have these underlying tendencies, the kilesas, defilements, the, the, they arise when the situation is right for them. Let us say the baby at the beginning he craved for milk, he craved for warm earth, of the mother, father and later on he needs more and more, more and more playthings, play items and uh, more clothes, more bags, more shoes, etc., handphone, all that. So, these tendencies are inside his mind, but is still not manifested. But when he mature enough, when he is getting older, growing, then these tendencies will be uh, improving and getting more and more. So, when person have right understanding, he can destroy this inside, you know, 
very deep level of consciousness in our conscious in a, in a very deep level in our consciousness we have these underlying tendencies of craving underlying tendencies of anger underlying tendencies tendencies of uh, delusion all these are uh, within inside our mind in a very deep level they will manifest they will come into surface they will uh, began to act as we grow and as the situation arise the desires will arise so we need to understand of the working of the mind the, these tendencies the uh, defilement tendencies anusayas are working and uh, act according to wisely and uh, mindfully and uh, with wisdom so when we develop right understanding that will give rise to wisdom we will get more and more wisdom that's very important so dear friends today we discuss the importance of right understanding and we will just finish one part of the right understanding and i hope to meet you again to discuss because the venerable sariputta the most uh, enlightened the most wis wisdom disciples of the buddha sariputta thero has explained the right understanding in 16 ways so as we have time in future uh, uh, in future dhamma sermons i hope to touch these uh, another 15 ways as the time allows us to uh, go further with the this dhamma discussion may the buddha dhamma and sangha guide you protect you and bless you namo buddhaya